often heard the comments from physicians that uh, even though I've only been in school for such a short period of time, that our education was really on par with what they learned in medical school, and a lot of the physicians really liked that. I am an Alberta resident, and I did my undergrad at the University of Calgary, and I did it in psychology. And then after that, I took five years and worked while I was applying to medical school, and then eventually applied to peace school. So first, uh, what is your definition of a PA? So I think a PA is a, an extension of a physician who's able to practice under a certain scope of practice depending on what the supervising physician is practicing under. And we're someone who is able to provide you know, high quality health care to patients in a way that is sort of similar to a physician but also a little bit different because we're able to spend more time with the patient than I, I find most physicians are able to. And yes, I may not have as much education as someone that you know came from medical school, but I, I, I like the ability to be able to sort of learn on the job and transition between specialties if, if needed. So um, yeah, I would, I would say a PA is like a highly trained, highly educated healthcare practitioner that can see patients and prescribe and be really interested or really integrated well into a healthcare team um, just under the supervision of a physician. Yeah, so I took my Bachelor of Science in Psychology um, and I took it took me a total of five years to finish my degree. Um, so I didn't really know what I wanted to do after I finished my degree, but I always sort of knew that I wanted to be in medicine in some way. Like, so when I was very, very young, I always thought, you know, dentistry or uh, maybe being a physician. And it really wasn't until my third year that I realized that I do want to apply to medical school. So in my third year of undergrad, I wrote my MCAT between my third and fourth year, and then applied to medical school for the following year to try to get in, and was unsuccessful. And so when I found out that I didn't get into medical school, I didn't really know what to do with my life. And I just sort of randomly started applying to jobs and landed a job at an endocrinology clinic. Mm -hmm. So as I was through going through that position, um, I told my employer that I was applying to medical school, I wasn't planning on staying there for an extended period of time, and they were well aware of my goals. So every year I would apply to medical school and every year I never got in. And so after five or six years of doing that straight, I realized that I need to do something different. Um, because I was getting older and I eventually want you know a career, but I also want a family as well. And so that's that's how I ended up here. Like I did a little bit of volunteer work within a hospital um, throughout my undergrad mm -hmm. and it was just something I always knew that I was very interested in and I don't even really know how I came about it because there's no one in my family that's in medicine. Um, I just was always very intrigued in science and biology and I took a lot of courses in that in my undergrad and then like I said in my third year is sort of when I realized you know being a physician seems like it would line up well with my goals at the moment and so that's how I started applying. And how did your six years of applying to medical school uh, prepare you for applying to PA? So uh, I mean just filling out the application itself was something that I was already used to having filled out so many medical school applications so, so that was one of the things and during my medical school application time I had read the book Doing Right as I feel like a lot of pre-PAs or pre-med students had, had done the same and I attended a lot of MMIs for medical school as well. And even though I never actually got into medical school, I found just going through the process of an MMI interview had really helped me with my PA MMI interview. And so I actually didn't really prepare for my PA interview at all because I had so much experience from my med interviews previously. I actually did a, um, so in Alberta, I, I don't know if there's something similar to that here, but in Alberta, I there, there's sort of like a program for um, rural students. So like I said before, I was born and raised in a very, very rural, northern uh, Alberta community. And there was a family physician there that uh, knew me. And he actually set me up with this lady who would do MMI prep for students wanting to go into medicine. And it was just if you're from a rural community because there's not enough students from rural communities going back to rural communities, you know, practicing medicine. 
and so I actually did a few sessions with her and so she also helped me prep for my MMIs and uh, but I, I feel like it was a very unusual thing like I sort of only found out about that through um, my connections from my hometown uh, but that really helped me just from like what to wear to an interview and how to you know, portray yourself how to think through questions um, how to think about ethics when ethical questions came up and then again that's why I went to doing right as well that okay. really, was this a free service uh, for rural students yeah so for me uh, yeah it was absolutely free this this one lady her husband's a physician and uh, they work just outside of Calgary actually and so I sort of got set up with her through one of the physicians from my hometown and so she just met with a couple of rural students who were applying to medicine and basically ran through how to do an MMI and uh, she had actually done some of the interviews at, M uh, at MMI's at some of the schools in Alberta. Okay. okay, why are you glad that you pursued the PA profession? So I am really glad I pursued the PA profession for uh, the people I met in the program specifically. And even though it took me, you know, five or six years to get here from my undergrad, I'm weirdly grateful that it took me that long because if I had gotten in at any other year, I wouldn't have met the people that I've met. And so, <laughs> yeah. so that's probably one of the biggest reasons I'm really glad that I pursued the PA program. Um, in addition to that, I also feel like I've finally found something that, you know, I'm able to pursue medicine, but yet still have the good work-life balance that I want. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's good. So you really like the small community? Yeah, I do like the small community. It is. Sometimes it can be frustrating, you know, that people don't know who you are, but at the same time, it's sort of like, yeah, I'm a PA, and this is what a PA does, and I'm proud to be in this position, and so that's kind of how I see it. Okay. <laughs> so um, what does your study schedule look like, your day-to-day? -day? So when I first started in, I guess, October, when we had our first online session, I would look at my entire week, the amount of work that I had done, or had to do, I would write it down on my planner and basically do school from you know eight till four, nine till five, and then once five o'clock hit, regardless of how much I got done, I would stop and go do something else. So I was very stringent for the first semester, and sort of as the semesters went on and as the weather got nicer and nicer, I found myself sort of being a little bit more lax when it came to my schedule. Um, but I, I would still use my planner, I just wouldn't be as strict at like nine to five. And I found the course load sort of change as the semesters went on. So as I became more used to being back in a school environment, because I had been out of school for you know five, six years at this point when I started the PA program. When I started to learn how to study again, I became you know, more efficient at it, and I didn't have to spend as many hours doing it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, but my first semester, I would always do Monday to Friday, nine to five, and try not to do any weekends. And I think that's how I didn't get burnt out um, do you have any idea of what specialty you want to work in based on the exposure that you've had so far in first year? Uh, I really don't. Like I've been trying to keep an open mind because my LCEs really haven't given me a ton of exposure to different specialties. I've really only been limited to like three or four of them. Um, I don't have a ton of experience to make that decision as of right now, so I'm, I'm really waiting for second year to roll around to get that clinical experience and hopefully find something that I absolutely love. Um, with that said, I've always been really interested in gynecology uh, you know, even when I was applying to medicine, I was like, you know, if I'm going to be a physician, it's probably going to be uh, an OB. Um, so that's something that I'm really look for, look really looking forward to my women's health rotation. Um, but I'm just trying to keep an open mind because I don't want to close off doors, in, you know, in, until I open them. Yeah. So as an out-of-province student, uh, you are required to do your rotations within Ontario. When I first applied, I did ask the program if I could do any in Alberta, um, but because they don't have a, a PA program in Alberta right now, they don't really have the connections in order to set that up for us. And so they offered me an opportunity to go and do some of my rotations in Manitoba, but they wouldn't offer any um, financial support if I were to do that. And so for me, it's if I'm going to be traveling to another province, I'm also just come to Ontario, have some additional financial support from our program, and sort of just know learn what I can learn from here so for my second year I requested to be placed in uh, Thunder Bay for five straight months and then Toronto for five straight months 
just for ease of travel and not having to move around because I don't know anyone in Ontario other than my classmates and I don't have the luxury of being able to stay with any family members or extended family uh, or friends so I really needed some stability in where I was living and you know I'm, I'm driving out from Alberta come beginning of second year and so how long is that drive? I think it's about 25 hours or so. Wow. <laughs> so I wanted to be able to just to drive to a place where I can stay and do majority of my rotations for my north half and then drive south and do the majority of my rotations for that and then sort of figure out where I'm going after that, whether it's driving back to Alberta or staying here. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to students who get accepted? So for our incoming first year students, what should they do in their summer before coming in? Uh, enjoy your summer. <laughs> I've heard that there's a lot of, uh, obviously, opinions about this, whether to study or whether to brush up on some anatomy or, you know, travel somewhere. Um, because of my undergrad, I didn't have the opportunity to take any anatomy classes or physiology classes uh, that related to human anatomy specifically, like a lot of my classmates who took, um, you know, kinesiology undergrads or health sciences. And so I came in sort of blind into this profession, um, into this first year, and getting thrown into anatomy labs and cadaver labs, and learning all this material that I had never touched before in my undergrad. So at, at that time it was a bit overwhelming, but I knew I had the ability to learn quickly and you know study efficiently mm -hmm. in order to get through that first semester. So. I took the opportunity just to sort of travel and hang out with friends and family and I worked a little bit and we had our medical terminology course during the summer and I didn't really know any better because I didn't know anyone in the PA program to tell me anything else that, you know, your first semester is going to be really hard, you should probably brush up on, you know, this subject. So I, I didn't have anyone to tell me that and I'm sort of glad that I didn't have anyone to tell me that because I'm very grateful for those months that I had during the summer because basically once September started, it was like, you know, start like it started, like you basically are running for the next two years through PA school um, and you're drinking out of a fire hydrant essentially with the amount of information that's coming out uh, at you. And yeah, I think for most people, you just sort of have to relax and take the time to enjoy the freedom that you have now because your next two years are going to be so busy mm -hmm. and you're going to have to sacrifice some of your personal time when you're in PA school so I would take advantage of that during the summer. So it really depended on the class. So in terms of anatomy, I had no background, so I was learning 100% from scratch. Um, and it, it was difficult, of course, learning that type of information uh, you know, within one month is very difficult. But then I started to realize that, okay, I, I bring attributes that my classmates don't necessarily have, right, or experiences that my classmates may not have. Like I bring my psych background and I bring my endocrinology background and these are things that a lot of, like I said, a lot of my classmates have never experienced before whereas they have a lot of experience in anatomy or um, in physiology. So I've, I really took my time to get to know my classmates, know what their backgrounds were and then sort of have them teach me and use them as a tool of studying. How did you do that? Was that in person or online? It was in person. So for our first residential block, when we're here in September for the month, um, we're doing anatomy labs and we're doing um, a few other classes, clinical skills. And so when I was having to learn the anatomy, I you know kind of buddied up with someone that took kinesi kinesiology in undergrad, and they basically taught me the whole human body <laughs> in a month. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it came to second semester, for example, when we had to start diving into endocrinology or third semester when we started diving into psychology, then I started to have classmates coming to me for help in areas that I was uh, more of an expertise in, I guess. And what was your experience like learning clinical skills, physical exam, OSCE, etc.? It was, um, the, the clinical setting for me, I, it was something that I was already used to because I worked in clinical, uh, for you know, five years at that point. So that wasn't too intimidating. It was just more so learning all the terminology uh, of everything and and being comfortable like touching a patient, for example, because I never necessarily had to do that in my prior position rather than other than just like you know strapping on a blood pressure machine. Um, so it was a bit of a learning curve, but 
I had already been exposed to patients and talking to patients, so I didn't have to you know, get over that hurdle. It was more so, how do you talk to them and perform a physical examination in five minutes? Um, and you know, it was a timing issue, if anything. How do you envision your PA practice? Uh, it's, uh, to be honest, I don't really know at this point. It's something that I probably get asked weekly from family members or friends, like, where are you gonna end up working? Where are you gonna be living? And I have to say, I don't know right now. Um, I know for second year that I'm going to be in Ontario because I have to be for my clinical rotations. But beyond that, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to stay in Ontario for the, the uh, grant, the career start sure. program, or if I'm going to go back to Alberta and try to get a position there. And Are first. you open to working in both provinces? So um, I think it's the career start program in Ontario that's made me more open to potentially working here because. I'm not having to compete against you know PAs that have already been working and have experience. It's only for first year you know graduating students, and so that's something that I've thought about. Uh, but I've also thought about wanting to contribute to the PA profession in Alberta, of course. And this is sort of you know being the only person from Alberta and being the first person from Alberta to go through the PA program at U of T. It's something that I never really expected to have to take on, but it's sort of just like fallen to my lap this sort of responsibility or um, being a trailblazer, I guess, for Alberta PA specifically. And so I do feel this sort of obligation to go back to Alberta and expand the profession because there aren't many there and we really do need PAs there because they can really contribute to the healthcare system in Alberta. I just don't think right now we're being utilized to our full, full ability. So I would love to go back to Alberta if I can but I'd be open to staying here if, if needed. In what way would you want to contribute uh, in Alberta? I just want to make you know physicians and patients more aware of the profession. And even during my LCEs, the majority of the people that I would come across had never heard about a PA. And so I often took you know a lunch hour or a few minutes before starting my day with them and sort of explaining what I'm able to do, what I'm not able to do. And I even found just through going through my, uh, my LCEs, there was some interest that was peaking from physicians that had never even heard of the profession, but just you know having me in the clinic, doing a few hours here and there, sort of exposed them to the idea of having this extended practitioner that was able to sort of do what a physician was able to do, but then um, not necessarily take over their job. Like there was a, like, there was room for us that they had never really seen before. And even though we're sort of like a nurse practitioner, I often heard the comments from physicians that, uh, even though I've only been in school for such a short period of time, that our education was really on par with what they learned in medical school. And a lot of the physicians really liked that. Mm -hmm. And even since I've been in the program, I've talked and met some more students from Alberta specifically that are interested in applying and are entering the program. And so I feel like I've sort of started a trend, I guess, mm -hmm. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. And what, what should they know uh, apart from issues around tuition and distance education? What other barriers or things they need to know about? Um, uh, like I said before, the flights, living expenses, where you're going to live. Um, and I think the other thing is just where are you going to live after you graduate? Where are you going to be able to get a job? And I think they have to know and be comfortable with being away from friends and family members for that second year. And, you know, obviously a lot of us are away from friends and family in our second year. But if you're from Ontario, a lot of your um, acquaintances can drive to you at least or fly to you, you know, relatively short time frame. Um, it's about a four hour flight from Calgary and it's not a cheap flight either. So I have sort of had to become okay with not seeing my friends and family uh, for you know potentially all of year two. Okay, yeah. um, I can only imagine what that would be like because I'm such a homebody. Yeah, uh, going home every weekend, seeing my parents. So, um, are you scheduling the big holidays to go back home? Like, how are you going to make it so you stay sane and centered and not? you know, burn out, get lonely. I mean, it's bound to happen to all of us, but yeah. how do you mitigate that in second year? Like, what are, you, what are your plans for that? So my plans are, uh, so I've actually been lucky enough to be placed uh, with some of my classmates in terms of like rotations. 
So I'll be in Thunder Bay for five months and I actually have a lot of classmates and friends that are coming through Thunder Bay during that time. And so I'll obviously be able to hang out with them. And uh, I'm lucky to have family sort of from coast to coast. So I have a family in Alberta, but I also have family in Nova Scotia. And so, and it's a little bit closer to fly there from here. And so, yeah, I've already thought about what am I going to do for Christmas break? Um, you know, am I flying back to Calgary or am I flying to Nova Scotia? Or am I staying in Ontario and hanging out with one of my classmates' family for Christmas? Um, and yeah, I've thought about, you know, March break as well. What am I going to do? Am I going to go on any vacations? Um, it's, yeah, I, I've been thinking a lot about this and it's, uh, it's an extra sort of step that uh, I feel like a lot of people don't have to think about. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, um, are there plans for your, even your classmates to support each other through second year? Yeah. Well, like I said, a lot of us are placed together. Okay. Um, so that's, I think that'll be really good. In terms of other support, like I said before, even in my first year, I would Skype or FaceTime a lot of my classmates anyway, or text them, and I'm going to continue that during my second year as well. And yeah. Okay. Great. And um, what difference do you think uh, PAs will have in Alberta if fully introduced and integrated? What difference will that will they have? What impact on healthcare? Um, a huge impact, especially because you know there's a lot of rural communities in Alberta. Other than Edmonton and Calgary, majority of the province is rural, I would say. Uh, and a lot of the province doesn't have access to you know, even a family physician. So the more peas that we get there, the more access to care we'll provide our patients. And drastically reduce wait times, because I know in some specialties in Alberta, there's like a one to two year wait time to get a consultation by a physician. And I feel like by introducing more PAs into Alberta, we'll be able to cut those wait times down and yeah, hopefully you know, serve our patients better.